Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Microsoft Flight Simulator and in today's episode I'm going to show you guys how to use MSFS Popout Manager with a touch screen and show you guys how to use the G3000, G5000 suites as you would in the real aircraft. Stick around guys, this one's going to be a good one. If you are interested in acquiring any of my Overkill's tutorial guides or simply interested in supporting the channel, please consider joining me on Patreon. Patreon subscribers level tier 2 and above have access to all of my guides as well as any future guides that come along down the road. Patreon link can be found in the description below and thank you to all of my current subscribers. Okay guys, so first off, I wanna make sure that you guys have a clear understanding of what the objective of this video is. So first off, I'm gonna show you guys how to use the pop-up panel manager to add various screens to actually any of your monitors of your choosing, but we're gonna focus on the G3000, the TBM 930 for this particular video. But as you can see here, that is the PFD on a touch screen that you guys are seeing on the top left of the window right now. Um, now we're going to change that. We're going to create a new profile. I'm just going to show you guys how to do a few things. Uh, and then we're going to talk about a third party application at the very end that will allow you guys to use just about any touchscreen device, uh, whether it be Android, a Chromebook. Um, I believe it works with Apple devices, but don't quote me as I don't own any. And that's not a shot against Apple. I just don't happen to own any Apple devices. Um, but uh, you can use a Kindle Fire, you can use an Android tablet, cell phones, all kinds of cool stuff that you guys can add as a monitor that your computer will recognize. Once you do that, then you will be able to uh, configure as a touchscreen. So we'll get all into that here at the end of the video. So the goal for the first part here, guys, MSFS Popout Panel Manager can be found on flightsim.to. You guys can find that in the link uh, or a link to that down in the description below. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to set us up to use the G3000 because that's the true advantage. Uh, it is really cool being able to pop these screens out to other monitors and be able to have them at your uh, dispose. But the big advantage to me and the thing that I was super happy about was being able to use a touch screen for the G3000 and the G5000 suite uh, located in the Longitude and the TBM 930. Now I will say, as you guys can see here, the touch screen that I have is, a hor is in a horizontal configuration. It's not in a portrait configuration. It's in landscape. So the G5000 that is located in the longitude and I believe a couple others, Honda Jet maybe, um, it will be uh, cut off on the edges um, in the aspect that you will have a black bar on the left and the right side of the screen that you're seeing here. Uh, but the suite is available. All touchscreen functionality still works. You can still access it. There's no problems there. It will just be shrunken down a little bit. I haven't found a way to actually stretch it to the full screen. And that's totally fine. Honestly, I can get past that. So if you are someone who is prone to uh, G5000 or G3000, you may want to orient your touchscreen device accordingly. Um, but uh, again, that's the only limit that I have seen thus far with this. So let's go ahead and get started configuring so you guys can see what this is all about. So the first thing we're doing is we're gonna create a new profile here. We're just gonna call it TBM. So let me get that TBM, there we go. All right, I'm gonna hit okay here. You guys have a couple of other tools here uh, or options that you can include. Power on required for pop out managers, managers on cold start, so you can hit that. And what that will essentially mean is that when the batteries are off, your pop out panels obviously will not display. Once you turn electrical power on and the screen actually comes on in the aircraft, you should then see the screen in your, uh, in your window, right? Then you have the configuration options. Left click to select a new window, shift left click to remove the most recently added panel, and control left click uh, when all panels have been selected. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna do start panel selection. And then what I'm gonna do is move the camera. And I do recommend that you sort of get as close to 90 degrees to the window that you're wanting as possible. Uh, I have noticed that makes a pretty big difference. And again, today we're just focusing on the G3000, so I'm gonna select the pilot window here. And that's all I'm gonna do. We're gonna do control left click as the instruction state to terminate the selection. And then boom, pops the window back up. You can see our window position here. And so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit start pop out. Really simple process, it really is very nice. 
And the camera is doing this all on its own. It'll reset itself to where the window was created. And the window did pop out. It's just on my other monitor. So give me just a second here. Let me grab this and bring it up so you guys can see it. There it is. And then now we have a couple different options. You have full screen mode, touch enabled. We do want that because it's not going to a touch screen. And then we want, um, we're gonna want always on top for that window. I like it anyway, you don't have to. These are all uh, obviously preferences. And now I'm gonna move this down to the touch screen and you guys should see that on your display here. And there it is. So let me get freaking windows and knock it off. Thank you, God. I hate snap window. Anyway, so the next, now that it's in the window that I wanted it to be in, I'm gonna move my mouse back up. Let me get back up to these screens here. There we go. Oh, let me get this out of your way. There we go, that's probably helpful. And now I'm gonna go full screen mode. And boom, there it is. Um, and let's see here, it's a little stretch. That's actually a little goofy. I'm not sure why it's configured quite like that. Let's do the hide the title bar. Huh. So this is the first time that it's ever left the black bars on the horizontal for the um, TSC, but that's totally fine. But still, so now let's talk a, take, talk a look. Nice. Take a look at the functionality. So I'm going to zoom on down here so you guys can see this all in action. Now, the one thing you cannot do, by the way, is you can't use the selection buttons. These are physical keys. So unless you have some sort of like encoder or button on the side of your screen, you'll still have to use your mouse to swap between the different modes. But now that we're here, let's go back to the home page. There it is. Maybe go to our flight plan. You can see we've already got some information here. I've been playing around with this for a minute. If we want to go to our procedures. Okay. And then let's say if we want to select an arrival. Uh, we're going to LA. Let's see here. Let's scroll up. Let's use the Hollywood one that's most common. Eastwood is our transition. And you guys can see it's very responsive. This is everything you're seeing is me typing on it or uh, using my finger here. Uh, let's do runway 24 right and hit load. And then now let's go back to our procedures, let's select our approach. <clears throat> ILS 24 right. We're going to use CVU as our initial approach fix and load again. Yeah, that's fine. Hit OK. I mean, guys, it's so nice. VNAV, go to all of our different menus. I mean, it's, this is such a cool feeling to be able to just look down and uh, and, and work your way through the screens. And it's, it's I, I'm blown away on how smooth it works. It really works very smooth. Gosh, I love all the different stuff that they found in here. Now, remember, we selected fuel, so that's actually up here, right? So I can go wait. Come back down. Uh, let's move over to nav and comm radios. Show you guys how easily the radios work. So let's do um, our transponder code, 3621, enter. We say we need to ident. Okay, we can go to, let's go back to the transponder here for a second. Let's turn it on. I mean, it makes everything so much easier, guys. It's so much easier. Now let's go back to the PFD, uh, is it PFD? Yep. Let's say we wanted to select our speed bugs here. And we wanted to adjust that. Let's say, let's see, we're pretty lightweight today. We would do about 75 knots for rotation today. VX still gonna be 100 knots. Oops, let's put that back in there. I mean, just everything. Let's turn on our best rate. Let's go ahead and do that, our best angle such a slick system uh, for barrow altitude for la we'd be looking at about 306 feet for 200 two zero right assuming the weather is or barometric pressure is sea level but you guys got the gist so very very awesome tool and you can use this for any window that you want uh, it really makes it very, very nice. They've really done a fantastic job with this application and bringing these uh, features to us. Now that we have the uh, demo squared away here, let's talk about some applications that can be used to help you guys add other devices. Now, as I'm doing this, I am going to check one thing really quick. I want to make sure that I'm not wrong about something, so give me two seconds here, but I'm pretty sure. Actually, never mind. I know I have it because it's on my uh, Android tablet. 
So an application that you guys can use that will allow you to add just about any device that I can think of. Um, again, I'm not positive about Apple, but I'm pretty sure. I mean, it's, it's been around for a long time, so I'd be shocked if it's not. Um, but the application is called Space Desk. Okay, all one word, Space Desk. You would need to download it onto your computer as the server, and then you would download or install the client onto the physical device. Now, again, this can be a Chromebook with, that usually have touch screens. It can be a tablet. It can be a Kindle. Uh, it can be your Android cell phone. Um, anything that has a touch screen. I mean, and this, it doesn't it have to be touch screen. It can be any monitor you want. If you just want to add extra screens, Space Desk is a really awesome way to do that. And what you would do is you would add Space Desk to both devices, start Space Desk on both devices. Uh, there's a configuration process. There's a ton of YouTube videos on Space Desk, guys. So if you guys have any questions, just go to YouTube and search Space Desk Setup, and I guarantee you'll find everything that you're looking for. And you could even refine it, Space Desk Setup for Android, you know. Um, so there's a bunch of different videos on it that really break it down very, very nicely. So that's why I'm not going into it today. Um, let some of the other pros out there take care of that one. Uh, but it is an extremely handy tool. And then once you have added it as a device in your Windows, and Windows will see it, okay? So you'll go to your, you could right click on your desktop, go to your monitor configuration or display settings, and you'll see this newly added device as long as Space Desk is running. Um, and then what you would do is you would go to tell Windows that it is a touchscreen. And if you guys have any questions on how to do that, again, Google how to add a touchscreen to Windows 10, Windows 11, whatever it is, and it'll walk you through the steps. It's pretty simple. Brings up a white screen. I would show it here, but uh, OBS did not like it. I tried to show it in a previous recording, and OBS hated it. So <laughs> it did not go the way I planned. Um, but it will bring up a white screen, and basically once you once that you'll hit enter until that white screen appears or the text appears on your touch screen you'll touch the touch screen windows will then identify that as your touch screen and then you can come in here and set up your windows as you like now i will tell you that with this particular application i've had a bit of trouble adding multiple windows so like one of the things that i wanted to try to do was add my pfd my mfd and my touch screen controller because i have two other just plain uh, lcd screens in front of me as well that my mfds for dcs world are attached to but it still would have been pretty cool to have those available um, but I have not figured out yet how to do all three. It, it never likes it. I always get either two windows that are combined into one screen, which is fine because I can span them across, or I only get one screen at all and I get an error. So I haven't quite figured out what the nitty and gritty of that part is yet, so I'm not going to show that part. Uh, but this particular process for the touchscreen controller, which again, uh, in my personal opinion, is the biggest advantage to what we're doing here, um, it is it's phenomenal. It works absolutely wonderfully. Uh, I've been really impressed with it. It makes it a lot more fun. Now, touch screens, if you guys want to buy one, um, this is a seven inch. What I'm using is a seven inch uh, touch screen. And I picked it up for like 50 bucks. I think it was on Amazon, $55 maybe. It doesn't have a case with it. I, I used a 3D printed case, but you don't have to have a case. You can uh, glue it to something, piece of cardboard, whatever, get creative, piece of wood. Um, you don't have to have backing to it. Obviously, it just helps protect it but um, and makes it look a bit nicer. But uh, if you guys watched the video that I put out yesterday on my home-built cockpit, uh, you guys will actually see uh, the touchscreen that I'm using in front of the flight stick. Um, I actually dropped it off. I knocked it off the video in the first half of it, or I knocked it off its mount. So you guys will be able to see. It's also pretty durable. Um, USB powered, um, and then HDMI. I'm using HDMI to a USB 3.0 adapter uh, to add my monitors. Now, if you guys want to go that route, uh, that is one of the advantages. It, USB, again, to three, USB 3.0 to HDMI adapter. Uh, and that allows you to turn an HDMI into a USB, and then using a USB hub, you can add as many as you want. I've got three that I have added to my PC uh, without taking up any extra spots on my um, video card. Like, for example, if you want to get technical, I have six monitors hooked up uh, to my monitor or to my PC right now, and my video card only supports four, and three of those are my main monitors, and one of them is my uh, VR. Uh, so really handy tool, but the one tip I'm going to give you guys if you choose to go the adapter route to in order to take further advantage of this uh, this new tool, um, and this tool has been out for a while. It's just I've been waiting for it to to evolve a little bit. When I first tried to use it, it was super buggy, uh, so I waited a bit. But anyway, uh, if you guys decide to go the adapter route, um, spend the money. 
And, uh, and the reason why I'm saying that is because I have purchased some adapters, the USB to HDMI adapters that were like $20 and below, and they are garbage. Uh, you just, that cable barely moves and it disconnects the monitors. And the problem is once it disconnects the monitors, your windows desktop resets and you could, you could potentially lose the configuration of your other screens and it would drive you crazy. And especially if you're doing something like DCS world where you're exporting, uh, if your monitors disconnect in DCS world, uh, it resets the entire monitor configuration and all of your exported screens go back to a single monitor. Uh, real pain in the ass. Um, so save or, or save your money if you have to, whatever you got to do, um, buy slowly. The adapters that I purchased, I got them on Amazon, but they were about 90 bucks a piece. Um, and again, it, that came from wasting my money on the cheaper stuff. And I had bought two, not one, but two of the cheaper adapters. And they both had the exact same behavior. You just, that, if that HDMI cable barely moved, uh, it would disconnect the monitor. So make sure you guys, you know, shell out the money if you're going to go that route. Make sure that you uh, get something that's worth it. Or, like I said, if you go the space desk, excuse me, space desk route, you don't have to worry about that because. And the the other cool thing about space desk, I'll tell you guys real quick before I wrap this up. Space desk is also functional over Wi-Fi. Uh, it does not have to be through a physical connection. You are going to get better results from a physical connection. You're going to get a faster speed. Um, many Android devices, at least, uh, you, they do have an option to use USB Direct Connect. Uh, in certain situations, you may have to go to Google. Uh, sometimes you have to put, turn on the de development mode and turn on USB debugging in order for that to function, but uh, that's going to be on an individual basis. Um, but uh, anyway, tons of options, guys. Get creative. Uh, y if you have old cell phones lying around, I have a good buddy of mine at RNJ SimTech who used some old cell phones as his touchscreens, uh, and it's it really makes a, a huge difference, a huge immersion difference. It will it will absolutely be a game changer in your immersion to be able to come down and select uh, your stuff as you choose. Uh, it will make it absolutely uh, worth it to you. I promise. Uh, it's just it's such a cool feeling to be able to simply click down and uh, be able to change all the settings that you have available. Um, in the in the configuration in the cockpit it's just it really does change it when you're flying around um any anything that you can do to get away from mouse and keyboard obviously huge game changer well guys that is it for this video i know i sort of went on tangent there but i hope you guys appreciated the information that was included here and uh, as always stay safe and healthy if you guys have any questions or comments leave them down below and i will see you guys in the next one take care folks